The purpose of this presentation is to show you how to hold an open house seminar. I'm not actually going to be presenting the seminar, but I do want to show you the components of it and how we go through the process. The first thing is, is we hold our seminars every Wednesday at 530 at our office. What I want to do is I want to talk about how we actually get the people into the seminars. I want to talk about the equipment that we use for the seminars and then also the handouts that the students will be receiving or the, the sellers will be receiving at the seminar. First thing is during the listing process, our agent goes through and actually has them fill out an open house sheet where they'll schedule up to four different dates that they could hold an open house. When they are doing this, they are also informed that should the house go under contract, that's fine. We'll go ahead and take them off. This is primarily for newspaper advertising. So we get them to have a commitment to it. We do not push the open houses as you have to do an open house. What we simply say is in today's marketplace, we have found a lot of sellers would like to be able to take advantage and save as much money as possible and they have selected to do their own open houses so that they can potentially find their own buyer and then sell for the low set fee. Likewise, it gives additional exposure where our days on market are sometimes over 100 days on market. When they're actually doing the open houses themselves, we're finding it's running under 25 days on market. So exposure is very key. So we get them to make a commitment up front. It makes it easier for us with regards to being able to get them into the newspaper ads. They get it on their schedule so it happens. And then our front desk person knows to call them for the first open house and remind them that we have a seminar on Wednesday that they can come to. Now when they actually come to the seminar, the equipment I use is I use a computer with an in-focus overhead projection system that projects it onto the wall so it's big and everybody can see it. Some offices have selected to buy a large TV screen. Whatever works for your environment, that's the key. For us, we already had the in-focus and it works great for the clients. In terms of the actual presentation once they are here, it's very key to go ahead and give them a copy of what you're presenting so they can go through and make notes. It is a PowerPoint presentation, it is on your CD, and you can go ahead and print it out. I suggest if you have PowerPoint, which you're going to have to have in order to present this, um, that you go ahead and print it as four up slides. It's still easy enough for them to read, but you're not taking up a lot of paper. But you'll want to go ahead and print that out for them. In addition, I also give them the seller's kit, which happens to be on your CD. I have made it generic as just help yourself, but if you would like, you can go in and customize it with your office information as well. I start out by going through the presentation. The presentation is actually broken into three parts. The first part deals with preparing their home to sell, getting rid of things like clutter, organizing the closets, making sure that the bathrooms are picked up, you know, using scents like vanillas and things and cookie smells in order to make the home more enticing. The second thing I go through and cover is what they need to do when there is a showing at the house. For instance, in the seller kit, the very first page happens to be a 20 minute, I mean a checklist so that they can go ahead and get the home ready and have a reminder of all the things, the little pickup, vacuuming, turning the lights on, all the things they need to do to get the home ready when an agent calls and says they'd like to show the home. I also go through and talk about the fact that, particularly in our area, we have a lot of people that work out of the house. So I discuss that if you get a call for a showing, it doesn't mean you have to leave the house for two hours. Go ahead, have everything ready so that when the doorbell does ring, all you do is pick up the kids, the keys, the dog, what have you, and leave during the time of the showing to give them the freedom to go ahead and roam around. I also mentioned that if you have emailed the listing to friends and coworkers and you want to show the home to them, that's fine. I suggest that they email us their name so that if they call us and want to write a contract, we know that they've actually shown the home. The last section of this presentation actually deals with holding the open house. I go through, I talk
talk about the fact that in the back of the seller kit, I have four sets of the registration page. I suggest that they actually ask the people their names and print the names on the form and ask them the phone number and print the phone number for them. The reason I advise them to go ahead and print it themselves is because when people write, sometimes they cross and they put half their home number and half their cell. If you ask them, they will automatically rattle off the correct number. Likewise, they're just much more uh, likely to give an accurate number. I also describe the fact that they have a comment sheet that they want to hide someplace. So for instance, if Jim and Mary have come through the open house and they've spent 45 minutes, they can register them and then on the comment sheet tell me they spent 45 minutes, tell me they're very interested and that way I will make sure that I call them multiple times. Many of our sellers actually have faxes at the home so I suggest that they fax it back on Sunday morning and again on Monday morning so we can try to call people over the weekend while they're actually out looking at homes, maybe get them in for a second showing, find out if they want to write a contract. I also uh, go through and suggest that they let the, the buyers coming through know that we're going to be calling them because if they know and they expect it, they're more likely to call us back with feedback. Uh, the reality is everybody is so busy, so we want to be able to reach them. Now, on the flip side, I don't let them know this, but I do stress to them that when they get these um, how do I want to say this? I want to stress that they want to turn these into us because of the fact that they have now protected that buyer as a buyer they have shown. So if the buyer calls us up and wants us to show the home, we'll still do it for the low set fee because of the fact that they gave us their names and they registered them as a client that they are working with. The last thing is when we are actually doing the calls, and they're not aware of this, but when we're doing the calls, we use this as a chance to find out if we maybe have another home that is a better fit. So for instance, if they've walked into a home for $400,000, but they can really only qualify for $300,000, we can convert them as a buyer and then be able to work with them in the price range that matches their needs. So again, in summary, what I tell the sellers at the open house is they need to get the people's names and numbers so that they can protect them as their clients and be able to qualify for the low set fee and they need to get those into us no later than Monday morning at 9 30 because that's our best time to be able to call people back is Monday morning when it's still fresh in their mind the homes that they've seen over the weekend and again these are in the back of the seller kit the last thing that I do is I play the David Knox preparing to sell your home video I gauge this depending upon what the listing agents have told me about the homes. If they say their homes are top notch, they look like their model homes, then I will skip this. If the homes are questionable and, sh and they have not been able to get them to clean up properly or to make certain um, enhancements to the home, maybe painting a room that needs to be painted, then in that case I will go ahead and play the video. I also make sure that they leave with business cards for that particular agent and I tell them when the buyer comes in, if the buyer seems interested in writing an offer, in addition to getting their name and their information on the guest registration sheet, also go ahead and give them some of the cards for the uh, listing agent that has their home listed. The last thing that we do at the end of the session is give them their open house signs. I actually go so far as to take the map book, I make a photocopy of the page, I put the dots on exactly where they should go in and put the open house signs, I go ahead and count it. Here in our area we have an association that is very strict, so we talk about the fact that they are going to get certain A-frames that need to go in areas that are common areas for the HOA. And we talk about the fact they cannot be on the sidewalk or the association will take them away. They need to put them in the grass. We also go through and discuss about keeping them far enough away from the lights, the traffic lights, so that people would have time to change the lane and make the turn. We also go ahead and give them a single one with a spike that they can put in the front of their home. 
And again, I stress multiple times throughout the entire presentation that they want to take the flyers out of the box at the beginning of the open house and then at the end of the open house, they want to put them back in the flyer box. The reason being, people will simply follow the signs, then when they get to the home, they pull the flyer and they never come into the open house. So in a nutshell, that is how we do the open house seminar, is by the use of the computers along with the handouts. And if you don't have the computer and you don't have the projector system, you can still go ahead and use the handouts that are on the CD that you've been provided. Thank you very much.